Okay, well it's nine o'clock, <clears throat> so we'll call this commissioner's court meeting to order here on the 22nd day of January 2024 at nine o'clock here at the courthouse. We'll start with the invocation. We'll let Jimmy uh, say the prayer and pledge. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I come to you. Thank you, Lord, for all you do for us, Lord. Thank you for the rain you sent our way, and, and Lord, just uh, you know what we need and how we need it. And uh, Lord, we just ask you right now just to uh, help us as we go into this, this meeting and uh, lead, guide, and direct us in the direction that we need to go. Uh, I thank you for our first responders and service people. Just ask you just to uh, keep them safe and uh, bring them bring them back home to their families and, and uh, help us in, in everything that we do. Just forgive us now where we fail. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Number one on the agenda is the public comments and requests for information on non-agenda items in accordance with section 551.042, the Texas Open Meetings Act. I've only got two here, uh, forms. Is anyone else want to see any more? No, sir. Okay. Mr. Marcus Williams, on con consultant on county fire consultant number five. We're going to have the comments now if you want to speak. I'm good. I'm sorry. Okay. Mr. David Ruff, questions on firehouse and FEMA relief. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Either that or speak real Last loud. time it talked back to me. Oh, good morning. Good morning, everybody. My name is David Ruff. I live in Cookville, uh, 4145 County Road 3070. I've just got a few questions here. Uh, first and foremost, um, it's been said over about the past uh, couple months that I, well, the past year or so, that I don't go to meetings like the city and stuff, and I'm, I'm the one that has been calling the city out uh, with investigations and rangers and things like that. I just want to let you all know, I should be 1,100 miles away on a contract right now. I'm losing money to be here. That's how important this issue is to me. And it should be to you, too. So I have a few questions. Um, recently, I found out that uh, the, the, the county was trying to get some grants. And they were denied. These are FEMA grants. These are things for emergencies if tornado blows through, massive fire, carpet bombing, something like that. And the uh, county was reaching out, I believe, to some sort of tri-sud deal and found out that they couldn't get these grants. And the reason why they couldn't get these grants is the paperwork wasn't filed. And furthermore, you start diving into it, it wasn't filed since 2018. I think it's 2024, is it not? Is that where we are now? Yes, sir. Okay. Can, can somebody tell me who was responsible for fi filing this paperwork? Uh. At the, at the end of the day, uh, it would have would have been the judge uh, with emergency manager coordinator. Uh, they ran things a little differently than we are now. It's more yeah. of an open court deal, but that would have been between the emergency coordinator, uh, Chief McRae, and uh, Judge Lee at the time. Okay, is Judge Lee here? I know I've spoken to him on the phone. I I honestly wouldn't recognize him. Is he here? No, he's not here. He's yet. not here. Okay, so I'm not going to speak about somebody that's not here that can't defend themselves. So emergency management coordinator, who would that have been? At that time, it was uh, Chief McRae. Okay. Now, in some of the things that I've been seeing over the past week, week and a half, two weeks, is it was COVID's fault, it was Judge Lee's fault, it was this, it was that. Folks, COVID is over. Businesses and people that blame COVID, enough, enough. Okay, so if somebody's responsible for the county not being able to get these grants, quite honestly, should be fired. 2018, we get a tornado. Didn't we just have a, a big blow, not more than what? A couple, six, seven months ago where we had 100 mile per hour straight line winds coming through? Things were falling down, power lines going down, structures were lost. 
I mean, that was probably close enough. Had that actually been a, an F2, F3 moving through, that would have been close enough. So that's the first thing that I want to bring up is enough of this blaming other people, okay? The next thing that I want to bring up is if anybody in this room wants to get up and speak and tell me in what realm, in what world, a third firehouse would not be a good idea. As far as I know, we have the money sitting here. We have grants. We have the money sitting here. In what world would a third firehouse not be a good idea? Tell me. It would employ people. It would protect people out in the county. Because I know living out in the county, if my house goes up, it's probably a total loss by the time that the city or anybody else gets there. That's just the reality. That's nobody's fault. That's just reality. So somebody please tell me in what world a third firehouse would not be a good idea when we have the money sitting here, we have the resources, we could hire people, our VFD could actually do some things rather than what, bring a couple buckets of water? Oh, that was a funny story that I heard Brookshire's the other night. I just want to put that on recording because I'll be using that later. It'll make sense to you guys. The next thing that I want to bring up is this whole emergency contact thing. I go by the name of Kilo Juliet 5, Bravo Bravo Zulu. I'm a ham operator. You'd be amazing on some of the transmissions that I pick up around here. You really would. You might want to think about that before you start using your radios and other communication devices, guys. To sit there and say, well, the emergency thing was, was passed over and, and nobody did it, I think it's disingenuous. Don't we have 24, 48 hours to make up a retest? And there wasn't a smooth transition from emergency management to emergency management? need to take a look at that. That, that was, was not good. The only other thing that I want to bring up, guys, is within all this, I just heard rumor that the city just uh, took out another bond in the measurement of 30 million, 35 million, somewhere in there. Or, yeah, uh, bond, I believe it was. 30, 34 million, 35 million dollars. And in that, wouldn't you know it, a brand new shiny fire truck. Wouldn't you know it? We as county residents would have been on the hook for 50% of that. I believe that's in the millions of dollars, is it not? How much is a brand new fire, uh, shiny ladder truck? Uh, Chief McRae, do you have 2.8 million. So we would have been in there for 1.4, that's 50% yes. as a county? No, we wouldn't have? Well, Chief McRae, I would love for you to explain that to me. And while you're at it, I'd love for you to explain to me where a third firehouse in this county would not be a good idea. And also, I'll end with this. I have heard rumors that when we were talking, it was going to be between the, the, the council and, and other people of where that line was going to stop if fire had to come out to the county. We go to Pittsburgh and we go to other places. And when it was asked, well, what about the other side? Well, no, not really sure about that. It's going to be up to the council, the city council. Are you kidding me? I've got paperwork this thick on them. You think they're going to do anything? Guys, stop fighting. Let's get this firehouse going. And Oh, I'm sorry. One last thing. People that are threatening other people and their family and stuff like that, I can do investigations, guys. This is ridiculous that we're doing this. Stop threatening people. I've been threatened. Some of them have been threatened. Some of the people that aren't here right now have been threatened. I'm getting tired of it. I'm getting real tired of it. Let's get this firehouse going and knock this nonsense off. Chief McRae, I would love for you to stand up here and explain some of this stuff. Thank you. That concludes all of the speaking. Consider and possibly approve the minutes from the January 8th, 2024 regular meeting of the Commissioner's Court. Make a motion we approve. Got a motion made by Commissioner Parchman to approve those minutes. Second. We got a second by Commissioner Mitchell. All those in favor? Uh, all those opposed? Carry unanimously. Number three, consider and possibly approve the annual audit for the year end, September 30th, 2023. Mr. Lanny Walker. Just make sure you speak up real well. I know you. So I, I get hollered at when those on 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 the TV came here. So. Okay. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. All right. 
First of all, let me say thank you for uh, the court allowing us to do this work again this year. Uh, we've had a, a really nice relationship through the years and we do appreciate it and we don't take it for granted. So. Uh, I thought I'd just kind of highlight some things for you. Where if you have a report that you can look at, uh, I'll be starting on page 15. Any of you got a report to look at? No. Okay. We don't have a report. Barbara's got the one. I think it was on the table. On, on your, yeah. In your office there, we brought one up to your office. Okay. okay. Well, I'll, I'll speak where maybe you won't have to see it. So. First of all, let me just say I don't have any problems or, or findings to report to you. Uh, all the internal controls are in good order. Uh, the auditor's office, the treasurer's office, uh, you guys uh, do a good job of, of spending the money as it's budgeted, and the controls are there. So don't have any problems to tell you about. Don't have any problems in any of the, any of the offices that collect fees to tell you about. Uh, it seems like everybody's doing a good job and, and working together really well. Uh, what I thought I would talk about uh, uh, is just kind of the financial position of the county at September 30th of 23, uh, the fiscal year in. In the general fund, we ended the year with a cash balance of just less than $14 million. That's a significant increase of about $3.8 million, and the, the reason for the increase was the transfer of the ARPA funds over to the general fund. Uh, to Really, it was to cover uh, uh, security uh, payroll from prior years, and that was allowed. And also, to uh, we used the money to, to do some uh, capital outlay. Our fund balance in the general fund increased by $3.6 million. Again, those ARPA funds were uh, $3.5 million. So that, that pretty much explains the increase there. Uh, the ARPA funds themselves started out the year with about $5 million. And at the end of the year, we're down to about 1.4 million. And again, you know, a lot of that's been sent to the general fund, and then also uh, we paid for uh, fire protection out of that that money as well. Uh, and so at that point in time, we had about a million four left. The debt service fund uh, ended the year with about five million dollars in fund balance, and that's of course, you know, money to set aside from our our taxes to pay on our debt service as it, as it comes due. Uh, so we had a, sm a small decrease in there for the year. Uh, the other funds, uh, the capital projects funds, which uh, the money was being used to buy a right of way out on 1735 and to do closings uh, on those deals out there. Uh, we spent about a million dollars in there this year, and at the end of the year, we had about 550,000 left in those funds. Uh, other funds that were special revenue type funds like road and bridge and et cetera, uh, those increased by 690,000. 560,000 that was in you guys' funds, the road and bridge uh, one through four. And then the jury and the sheriff commissary funds went up as well. Of course, that, those are kind of deceiving a little bit because most of the money, are, are, the reason for the increase is because we're transferring money over there from the general fund. So, uh, as far as the, the funds for this year, uh, as I said, the general fund went up by $3.6 million, and $3.5 million of that was ARPA funds. Um, another couple of things that increased, and it, it, it has it surprised me through the years that our sales tax continues to go up. Uh, Sales tax was up by 270,000. Property tax uh, went up by 446,000. Um, as far as our expenses uh, in the general fund, they were up about 1.6 million. Most of that reason for that increase was the, the capital outlay, that all the equipment and things that were bought with those ARPA funds. So that's the main reason for the increase there. As I said already, uh, the ARPA funds, uh, we, we, we did uh, either transfer over or we spent $4.9 million in those funds. Uh, debt service funds, again, a decrease of 255000 but we've got $5 million there that's, that's sitting there to, to pay on those debts as they come to you. And, of course, also we collect the $8 million a year from TxDOT Look. to help fund those uh, payments. Um, the other funds... Uh, Again, not a significant decrease, about three hundred thousand dollars. So, overall, uh, I think you know, uh, not a significant 
change from the prior year other than the fact that we recognized a good bit of those ARPA funds because we had collected the money a couple of years ago and had just shown it like unearned revenue because we hadn't spent it yet. And so we spent some of it this year and so that kind of explains the increases to our balances. So. Uh, as I said, the, the financial position is strong. Uh, we're meeting our debts as they come to you. Um, you know, I, I don't have any findings to tell you about or anything like that. So if you have any questions, I'll, I'll be glad to answer. That, that money from the tech stop, that's still coming in on our loop project. Is that, that yeah. correct? Yeah, we collect it twice a year, uh, four million, basically four million once every six months. Right. And, and that will that will help us get those those debts paid Service. that were you know the funds were borrowed to do that construction so you know that's getting paid basically with with tech stock reimbursements so any questions for Lenny? Lenny, we appreciate you doing the audit for us. And, you bet. And uh, we want to appreciate our our auditor's office, our treasurer's office for keeping everything in line and, and in good good standings for y'all. Yes. Uh, it's always nice when, when you come and, and hear good things from, from the Thank auditor, you. and, and uh, those officers are doing a great job, and we want to appreciate them. So. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Lenny. Thank you, Lenny. Thank you. See you later. I'll make a motion to approve the audit. We've got a motion made by Commissioner Mitchell to approve the audit for the 2022-23 year, September 30th. Second. 23rd. Got a second by Commissioner Parchman. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Number four, consider and possibly approve the resolution for supporting county motor fuel tax exemption. We've got Judge Ransom here visiting with us from over at Cass County. We appreciate him driving over and speaking with us today. Good morning, Judge and Commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to be here on a cool rainy day. Uh, the county motor fuels tax was implemented in 1923 by the state of Texas, and it's 20 cents per gallon for diesel or for gasoline. It's the state sales tax. It's just baked in the cake when you pay for any, any food. And uh, it hasn't changed since 1991. Counties pay that tax, and I think it's an unnecessary tax on counties because we're the action arm of the legislature. Uh, school districts are exempt from that tax. Uh, there are a couple of other exemptions uh, to that tax. I looked at my, uh, my fuel consumption in Cass County, and if, if we were exempt from that fuel tax, we would save about twenty to $30,000 a year. So you can look at your fuel volume, and if you're burning about 50,000 gallons, for every 50,000 gallons of fuel you're burning on the road, in the sheriff's department or your county trucks, uh, you're looking at about $10,000 in tax money that's going to the state. That's parasitic loss as they administer the collection of that tax and then turn around and filter it right back to, you know, the things that we do or we, or we the, the grants we apply for or, or funds that we're, you know, trying to receive from the state. And so it's just inefficient, though. Uh, so I, I've asked uh, Representative Cole Hefner uh, to take a look at this and Representative Van Deaver over in uh, my area to take a look at this, uh, Senator Brian Hughes. We've got draft legislation already drafted. We have um, the bill analysis is done. This will be for consideration in the 89th regular legislative session. So we're way ahead of the, the, uh, the session at this point, but I want to have our ducks in a row before we get to the start point of early filing. Uh, I worked for 11 years as, before I was county judge in the state legislature as a staffer for state and state senator all the time, so I'm familiar with the process. And, uh, last session, when I saw that the statute was changed a little bit, the motor fuel tax, it just it, it clued me in. I started looking into my expenses of the county, and I thought, well, that's kind of ridiculous that we're paying a sales tax on fuel to enforce state law. And most of our consumption, of course, is our sheriff's department. We're a large rural county like you guys are. We've got about 938 square miles that we're trying to control. So we're burning a lot of fuel. And uh, we're not looking to shift to electric vehicles anytime soon. <laughs> Thank you. Stop the middle pursuit to charge up the electric vehicle. So we're going to keep burning fuel and paying that tax. And I just, uh, so this is just a formal way, it's non binding resolution to support, to support that legislation, to demonstrate local support, to uh, request an exemption for counties. Um, from the state perspective, the state motor fuels tax generates about $4 billion in revenue to the state. That sounds like a lot, it's a lot. 
but it's not a lot for the state. That's less than 5% of the state's total budget. And so our little piece of that is minuscule. Uh, so it's a drop in the very large state budget coffers. So um, if they balk at our, at our proposal of exempting all counties, then we can negotiate and look at maybe bracketing, similar to what we did with Senate Bill 22, where they bracketed 300,000 population counties and less to cover the rural counties, because that's really where this will benefit us the most, because we're patrolling more area and we've got less resources. So, uh, and that, that would be acceptable, obviously, to most of us in, in Northeast Texas. Does anyone have any questions for me? I'm happy to answer them. I just want to reiterate there, I have reached out to uh, Cole Hefner and also Brian Hughes. They've, uh, their, their understanding and, and their feeling on it is it's almost double work for the state to take the money from us, carry it down there, run it through all the paperwork, and then send it back to us. So uh, both of them are uh, very much in favor of this, and uh, I've, I've talked with uh, Judge Ransom quite a bit about it and some other judges uh, that, that feel the same way. This will go into the, just the county, the fire department. Some of them are already exempt, but uh, Cole and them are or Hunter, they have no problem with this at all. They just feel like it uh, would cut some of the paperwork out, some of the bureaucracy out of it, so that they're not having to do so much different paperwork. It's what I would call common sense legislation, which is not very common. Not very common, <laughs> right. <laughs> Y'all got any questions about it? I'll make a motion we approve the resolution. Got a motion made by Commissioner Parker to approve this resolution on the county motor fuel tax exemption. Second. Got a second by Commissioner Applewhite. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Carries unanimously. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Number five. Cons You can't take him anywhere. He's always doing something like that. <laughs> Every, everywhere we go, he's got to do something like that. He probably is. Take it to Cass County. Number five, considering possibly approve the hiring of a consultant <coughs> form from the <coughs> request for proposal for assistance in establishing the Titus County Fire Department. We received two uh, responses to this. Uh, one came in at uh, $2,633 from Solomon Safety. The other one came in from Fire Chief Solutions, and it was fifty-six thousand. Uh, with one of them, the one the, for the two thousand and twenty-six six thirty-three, uh, just said that they would do the job. It didn't have any plan broke out in it. And the one from the Fire Chief Solutions had a plan, uh, not necessarily a something planned, but a, a preview to, to what they would want to do and how they'd want to do it. Excuse me, Judge. Hey, I'm sorry. I hear you. You said that the, there was one for $2,300 and one for what? One, the first one was for $2,633 to put a fire department together. $2,633. Fifty-six thousand. Can you read on both of those real quick? I, I'm sorry, I might be mistaken on the place. Can you read on both of those the twenty-six hundred dollar what they're offering in services and what the fifty-six thousand is offering in services? <clears throat> Cuz County Assist the Stabs County. This is the one for the twenty-six uh, thirty-three. Titus County Assist and Establish the County Fire Department, proposal number 202403. It is in Sir pleasure of Solomon Safety Group to provide this RFP to the Titus County. Solomon is a group extremely qualified to provide these services, having overseen and implemented more start up fire departments than any other company. Simply said, this is ex exactly what Solomon Group does and Titus County will see the full benefit of decades of experience, expertise that Solomon Safety Group provides. Fire Chief Mark, and I may be misspelling this, Spangler, <coughs> will be the day-to-day -day contact for Titus County. He recently completed a very successful startup of another fire department in Texas. Chief Spangler will be supported by the Fire Chief David Phillips, an industry veteran who has overseen and assisted with numerous startups around the county, ranging from Tennessee and Georgia all the way to Montana and Oregon. Chief Spagler and Chief Phillips will have the entire Solomon Safety Team available to support as well as a variety of subject matter experts to call on needed to help the craft 
the best possible fire department with available funds. We're pleased to provide our resumes upon request <coughs> as also references of any other information as desired to obtain. <coughs> We're able to provide all these services listed in the RFP for 2633. We look forward to the supporting of Titus County on this project. And then it goes through here. <coughs> there is a, a work deal and you're welcome to have a copy of it instead of me reading it all to you. The, the one from uh, the Fire Chief Solutions. Uh, <coughs> his name is Greg Lloyd. I've been in the fire service and emergency service delivery business for 30 years. I have worked for career fire departments with budgets up to $21 million and have supervised as many as 78 personnel. I've been involved as a leader of office members projects within the emergency service delivery business, including building fire stations, ISO evaluations, <coughs> promotion testing, all the aspects of hiring firefighters and fire officers and fire chiefs. I was a licensed paramedic for 27 years and worked with American Heart Association on the DFW Metroplex grant. I've also awarded the Texas Firefighters Association Long Star Achievement Award for being the first fire service EMS organization in Texas to initiate blood lab testing in the field. I have served for the Texas Best Practice Committee from the inspection and have helped <coughs> develop and currently standards manual as well as conducting the first site inspection for the Irving Fire Department. I was deployed, deployed to Bastrap and Tri-Counties wildfires through uh, TIF MAS as a strike team leader and have served on numerous boards including the International Association of Fire Chiefs as the Vice President of the Southwest Division. I'm an innovator and a problem solver. I make <clears throat> many perspectives and a vast depth of knowledge of fire service to table. I'm excited about the possibilities in front of Titus County as they move in a direction that will certainly take the fire protection in Titus County to a much higher level. I'm honored to have the chance to be a part of this endeavor. And then it goes on there, and he even has it broke down into how many firefighters, how much they uh, estimated pays. None of these are, are hard numbers, but uh, has a budget there of a total operating budget, uh, one for 782000 and one for one, $1, $1,010,773 in his broke out plan. And you're welcome to a copy of that as, as well. Yeah, if you. Copy of that too. I, maybe I didn't hear that. If I'm speaking out of place, let me show you down here. I'm in business, that's, I, I do sales. And what I'm hearing at 2,600 versus a, a 56,000. 56, the, the contrast between that, it, I mean, in sales, there's some of the same that if you're selling from cheap and ain't selling, there's enough hundred bucks on it, and it sells. I, uh, what I'm trying to figure out is between the two contracts, are they listing what services they're offering to the county for this? Uh, I'm assuming this is a a consult for the fire department. Right. Consult to put it all together. Uh, one has the, has the firefighters, what they'll be paid, uh, what it's going to take to put things together, and the other one is just that they would do that, do it all for the 26, which is spelt out in the contract. That they would do it all for 26, but nothing really listed. The other one's listed. The so. other one has a plan kind of listed to start okay. with. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there any way we can set up a meeting with these guys to so we can ask them questions and whatnot? You can you can ask them questions at any time. We've been able well, to I do that uh, I figured the they whole could, time. Could come here to, we could ask them. Because to me, this fire chief solution is kind of misleading to the public. That's a total operating budget. I don't see anything for a mechanic, a fuel allowance. Uh, you know, that's that to me is not a full operating budget. Uh, that's just uh, your. Uh, what you're paying, uh, paying the firefighters. That's all I see there on this one. What I've come up with on running those figures, uh, the figures don't add up. I've, I've run them ever which way. Uh, the first one with the county employees, uh, every way I ran it, it was $1,234 off on their, their total payroll. But on the total operating budget, if you take their figures and pull them from that million ten seven seventy three, you still got uh, I mean you got one hundred and fifty one thousand six hundred and sixteen dollars 
to run a fire department. That's everything that, that has to be, you know, done as far as the building, the, and I just don't see any way. The same way down here with the contract employees, you've got uh, the difference in that is $117,324. Uh, I think what should have happened is we should have had a workshop and met with these guys before today and talked to them, let them explain what they've gotten all here and tried to do something, you know, tried to work out something, make, make sure that's what this was, was an RFP. It, it wasn't a, you know, wasn't something that was, was locked in, in in totally, uh, I, I think that we should have met with these both of these folks and and talked with them about you know before we or, or still need to before we vote on this. Did you not have their numbers? Did I not tell you that you could speak with either one of them? Yes, sir. Okay. But that that needs to be as a group. That don't need to be as individual. Well, if you've got questions, they could answer your questions. Well, I mean, they, yeah, they, they could answer the questions, but it's something that all of us need to, need to know and need to talk about. It don't need to go through five different people at a time to, to get it done. As far as that, I mean, that's me, uh, y'all. Well, I've, I've met with this company, and he's very knowledgeable. With it. Without his knowledge, we're going to really struggle to get a fire department together by October. Uh, we've got to have somebody with the knowledge he has to open to get this thing rolling because we're running out of time every month which, that goes by. Which which one are you talking about, Joe? The one that's fifty six thousand. But I like to know what it's going to cost to put the whole thing together, turnkey, and I want to know what it's going to cost year-round budget to operate this thing yearly. That's what I want to know. I have not seen any of that yet in any of these uh, proposals. Once again, we've got to do something to move forward. Uh, we do not have a fire contract. It will go out in October. Uh, we've we keep pushing this down the road and pushing this down the road, uh, and, and you're not going to be able to get a fire department together. I, I understand so that. Then you're going then you're going to leave the county without fire protection. So, uh -uh. Uh, I've I've met with a guy, talked to him, uh, answered all my questions. Everyone that I've talked to about this man, uh, the Denison uh, City Council, uh, not City Council, but the City Manager there, the uh, County Judge in Grayson, all of them have, have had fire fine comments about him and feel like he'll do some outstanding job so have you talked to the uh, fire chief at, at uh, Denison that he worked under mm -hmm. you have yeah those the resumes that he had there yes he worked at cop L too well we've known this day was coming in and why haven't y'all reached out wanting to talk to him that's what I'm wanting to know well, I have hey. talked to him I mean, that's, that's, I kept waiting for us to, to, like I say, we needed to meet as a group, not as individuals with these folks. I mean, that's what the RFP is for, is to get them in here and them explain what they're going to do, give us their figures and say, this is what, what we're looking at. But we, all we've got is this right here, and the numbers don't even come up on it. They should have been here today. <laughs> We can ask questions to them. Until, until you hire them, you don't know, they don't know that they need to be here. I mean, this, this, this is just a resume. I mean, they don't know if they've been hired or not. You sure can. Thank you. 
this, whoever you decide to hire, you're not locked into anything except to pay them for their services. And they are to assist you, and I'm going to read these things in here. Um, <clears throat> all specifications listed below in compliance with the state of Texas Fire Department regulations for accounting company managed fire departments. These items may be financed through a purchase, lease, or rental as determined by Commissioner Stewart. When whoever it is that you choose makes a decision on whether to purchase, whether to lease, whether to rent, whether to buy new or use the, the qualifications for the staff, that person will put that information together and then bring that to you each piece at a time. You're not authorizing them to go out and build the building or to secure a rental. So I think that may be why it's not listed in, in those responses because we didn't ask for that. The other things that they are to do, <coughs> excuse me, recommend the local facility to house a fire department, including main building to house equipment and living quarters for fire department staff and related utility services. Locate and ensure delivery of appropriate fire apparatus and trucks. Locate and ensure delivery of appropriate tools and equipment. Propose, propose adequate staffing plan to ensure the appropriate amount of fire protection. Develop and present an operational budget for the first year of operations. Develop and propose staff manuals and operating manuals. Set appropriate oversight and register with the state of Texas. Any other recommendations, should the proposer be aware of other considerations, please include those that information include information on those items. So as you can see, this is simply to hire a consultant to assist you. Um, for example, the way it was explained to me is when it's, it's time to look at fire trucks, this person would go out and search for those items. You would not be charged with having to do those duties. When it's time to decide the location, you would have to give him some, some recommendations. Do you want to build? Do you want to buy? Do you want to rent? What you want to do? But he is going to go out and then bring back proposals to you. There's no budget set up at this time to spend any funds. So everything that this man proposes is going to have to come back to court to get your approval before it moves forward. Any questions about that? Mm -hmm. Very well. Thanks for clearing that up a little bit, Barbara. Uh, uh, just to kind of give you an idea, that million dollars is going to be payroll, obviously. Uh, I think that. 100,000 is going to be benefits, right? Um, what I did was, is I think we can try as far as what it's going to cost us every year. Well, the stand up, we're going to use our funds. That's how we're going to stand this up. That's how we're going to, hopefully, those our funds are going to cover it. You know? And then on an ongoing basis, I think what I did was, I went to Pittsburgh, because that's a similar size fire department, and looked at their budget. And then we can also compare with Hopkins County. And I think we can all kind of get a pretty good idea of what it's going to cost every year. This payrolls, we know what the payrolls are going to cost for the most part based on that estimate. Uh, we may have to pay, we may have to adjust a little bit, you know, depending on what kind of person is upon them, but uh, that's a pretty good idea that we're going to pay on payroll. And then we're just looking at fuel costs, you know, uh, bump, bump over here every year, and, and we can kind of, I think we can say I can come up with a pretty good idea of what that's going to look like. Uh, I, don't, I have my idea, but I would start just speculating on I mean, it because I'm not farming. But just from what I was able to put together, I think I, think I have a pretty good idea of what this is going on. And I think everybody can do that. So, um, and I do have the, the city of Pittsburgh's budget, and I believe the judge has Hopkins County's budget, if I'm not mistaken. So we got those two budgets that we can kind of work together and try to come up with a pretty good idea of what it's going to last. When, when we voted on this to, to move forward and, and that the city did not accept the, the 750000 uh, offer that we sent them, uh, I thought we all voted that we was going to go forward uh, and work together and try to get, get the best thing that we can. Uh, I definitely feel we need a consultant in this. Uh, Jimmy, you've got some fire experience, but uh, as far as putting it all together and the manuals and all that, uh, hiring the people and stuff, I don't feel adequately enough to do it myself, and uh, that's why this is on the on a proposal today, is to move move forward with, with that. And I thought we was all in agreement, said that we was going to work 100 percent together. But either way, but we need to get we need to get moving, get the ball moving forward. I make a motion to approve hiring the consultant for fifty six thousand dollars. What what are the, the other one that the, the cheap one? He's not they're not qualified to what's they didn't send the right, the, the adequate information. I mean, they didn't send hardly any information, and uh, I wouldn't put it together. Chief McRae said he wouldn't put it together for fifty-six thousand. 
I, I don't think there's adequate money to do what we're asking them to do. Find places, find, find fire trucks, all this. Uh, you're going to spend that money in, in less, than, less than a week doing things that we need to do. And this is a process that we've got to get this up and running by October. So there's going to be a lot of hours involved in it. So Is he working on this as a whole with the other or just by itself? Is he working on with the whole with the whole group of fire protection services, or is he working for himself? His himself is this his company? But is he the only only one that that will be doing this? Does right. he have any? Jimmy, employees I, I don't know or? that. That's just just like saying uh, how many employees is the funeral home got. I mean, I'm sure he's gonna have other people that he reaches out to, but I mean, how he does that? That's that's not my my deal. We got a motion made by Commissioner Mitchell to approve considering possibly hiring a consultant and request for proposal assistance in establishing Titus County Fire Department. Second. Uh, got a second by Commissioner Applewhite. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. No. So Jimmy votes no. Jeff? No. Well, um, go ahead. Hire him. Yeah. Hire him? Yeah. So three to one. Number six, considering possibly approve the discretionary exemption under local government code number section 262.024, number two, for purchasing related to the new county fire department on the basis of preserving and protecting the public health and safety of the residents of Titus County. Can you ask any questions about that? You leaving too. <laughs> You want to speak? Uh, uh, this is the discretionary on the exemption that that's exactly what it is. That's what it is about the buyout. Right. Yes, sir. So we would we would like for you to speak on it. Yes. Yes. What else? Well. I'm asking y'all to vote for that. What that will do is allow us to more efficiently purchase equip, purchase these things from the fire department. If, if y'all don't vote for this, then we have to follow the traditional um, bidding. The traditional purchase order. So this will this will allow the process. To the, re the reason that this is in the place, <clears throat> we're going to have to buy some used fire trucks, things of that nature, so that you can't necessarily bid them out. Just like the commissioners got into uh, deals when you'd find a dump truck over here that was used, well, we had to go back through the process to bid it out. Uh, and so with this being health-related uh, fire protection and stuff, it is my understanding that we can do it that way. We will have meetings. We'll have call meetings. We're not going to purchase anything without everybody voting on it. It's not what we're saying. What we're saying is we want to put that back into uh, exemplary so that we can move forward on it. If we do find a, a fire truck or we do find this and we, we need to call a special meeting, we've got those times set up. We'll come in and vote on it and make sure that we're all in agreements on spending the money. It's not, not like we're going to be spending the money just Free will and it will be a voted out out deal. And because we have such a short time time window on this, uh, the state law allows us to y'all vote this. We, get, we can exempt ourselves from some of the traditional rules we follow. Again, it's still going to be transparent. We're not doing anything without without everybody knowing about it. It's just yeah. it's just a faster, more efficient process based on the short time frame that we have. If we if we follow the traditional first requirements, we would. We would really run into a real problem trying to get this done in 10 months. Four to five years, probably. By the time you get buildings and trucks and get them here. I make a motion to approve the exemption. Discretionary room. Got a motion made by Commissioner Mitchell to approve the discretionary exemption under the local government code, number section 262.024, for the purchasing of new uh, equipment for the fire department for the Titus County. Second. Got a second by Commissioner Applewhite. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Carries unanimously. Number seven, consider and possibly approve the plan using the Senate Bill 22 for the Sheriff's Office Salary Assistant grant of 350000 as directed by the State Controller's Office, effective upon approval of the state agency and the funding received. Thank you, Mr. Rowe. Thank you. 
Sheriff, would you like to speak a little on it? I mean, it's pretty, uh, we've got it here. He's got his all broken down. And uh, what I want what I want to let the, let the public know, uh, first of all, and, and we appreciate the way you did it. Well, what they did with this, uh, they've got all of their benefits included in that grant. So the taxpayers themselves are not going to be out any money on this. The, the only thing that, that, that scares me about this, and, and part of that is why we've got it in there, is not to approve this until funding reaches here and approval from the comptroller's office. Because when they get this from us, they might say, you can't do this part and, and do away with something on, on that grant. So we're not going to pay those until that. But, but here's the whole key to that. <clears throat> When a politician tells you something, you've got, to, you've got to take it for a grain of salt, with us included. But they keep saying this is never going away, and this is Lieutenant Governor uh, Patrick's deal. He does want to give this to the law enforcement and, uh, and the county attorneys and stuff to help them to do their job even better. But if it does go away, on some of this, we're still going to be stuck with, with this. Uh, on, if it's a new position, then we've got some flexibility there. Also, I want to thank the, uh, the sheriff for adding in there to help with a the tower. They want a, a radio tower, and uh, we'll be able to boot off of that as, as far as the county with our radios as well. So I didn't mean to interrupt First you. First of all, I want to say thank you for thank all of you guys. I, I hope most of the four will get you. I just want to say thank you for approving this grant. This is and like you said, we all put it on that, and Chris Pratt worked with me on it. We, uh, uh, but these grants sometimes, they, a lot of times, they don't last forever. So what we did is we just took the memo amount that we could use to get the pay up that we're required to do to even get the grant. Right. Said, this is to assist law enforcement pay. And so the general did qualify for this, and they were the ones that actually under the amount that this, that this is Appreciate it. Appreciate all y'all do and, and being out on the roads for us and, and doing all y'all do. We appreciate you. I'll make a motion to approve. We've got a motion made by Commissioner Applewhite to approve the Sheriff's uh, SB uh, 22 grant. Do they get here to the, to the grants? The, until the money is arrived here and, and, the, and it's controlled through the controller's office. They will, we will send this to the controller's office. They will say whether this yes meets expectations, no it doesn't. And then once they're funded, they're telling me, we've got to sign these bills into effect by the 30th, the 31st. 31st. The deadline is the 31st. There's not any catch up. So we are gonna apply for the grant and then let them just, they're, the controller's the ones calling the balls and strikes, the best way I can tell you. And, and uh, if, it's a, if it's a ball on their part, it... It should be, but they're telling me 90 days is, is probably what it's going to be. But there's no, there's no guarantee that that's the rumor is 90 days is what it's taking to fund it. So. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the office told me that this is kind of, this isn't like traditional grants. I mean, this is a, it's a done deal. Our, our, our county meets the uh, population requirements. We get that full money. We get it for our fiscal year. Okay. Um, some counties went ahead, and I think this was dangerous because why is it going do this? Go ahead and start spending the money in October because that, that everything was still up in the air. Um, they didn't even have our application form. They didn't, you know. But uh, my conversation with the comptroller's office last week is that we, we get money in full. And then, you know, at the end of the year, what we didn't spend, we got to get back. And so, um, and they also told me that, you know, once we have y'all's approval, um, I mean, the, the, the applications, like 10 questions, I mean, it's, it's just a done, it's they, they streamlined as much as possible. Uh, they approve it. They told me it's 90 days, and and I talked to the. Judge, anything except 90 days. They're telling the county judges 90 days. I don't know what they're telling y'all, but they're telling us 90 days down there. Their process is 200 and some odd. 250 something applications at one time. Um, you know, whatever that window is, uh, you know, talk to somebody there. 
Um, whatever that window is, I mean, the, the money is, we, we get the full money. There's not a question about that. And whatever's not spent, it goes back. And so it'd be like, Understanding that as well, but if, if the jobs, <coughs> with with my conversations with the county judges and the and the controller's office down there, if the jobs are not appropriate to what they're, if there's not a description of that job that meets what the controller is saying it's going to meet, then those funds are going to go away. And if we go ahead and start funding those funds without without that, and they do call strike three on us, then we're up for that money. And I'm not going to put the taxpayer out there for that money. Sure, and that's and. and and I, I agree with you on that. Um, the, but the, the statute is, is very straightforward. You know, we, we know, you know, we know we're not at, at that. We, we know we can't, like, increase service hours. I mean, it's specifically not going to happen. You know, you have to create these positions. You can increase the investigator. You can increase the prosecutor. Our patient system support uh, You know, we know we can't, uh, you know, the legal assistance raise out of this. You know, another one of these kind of things that would uh, that would get kicked back. I mean, we were like, yeah, uh, you know, we're going to give, uh, uh, you know, somebody who's already there is just a legal assistant, um, a raise, and we're going to pay for it with that. And yeah, the Tom going to say, well, that, that, that's not going to work because we specifically said you can create, uh, you create and, uh, uh, prosecutors, investigators, victim assistance coordinators. You can give raises to prosecutors, uh, victim assistance coordinators, or investigators. Outside of that, then yeah, that's going to be outside of bounds. That's specifically in the statute. Um, uh, there's not a. So there's still. Uh, there's still. It's pretty straightforward. It's not a, it's not a high ball thing. I mean, we, you know, we, we know we can't. Uh, you know, we know there's things that an office not going to do, which would be like, you know, oh, let's just give everybody a raise or something like that. Well, that's some of that stuff's prohibited. And uh, I, that's, that's what we're talking about. And, and like I said, what they're telling me is if those jobs aren't replaced, if you take someone that's in your office and move them to one of these new jobs, then there's some gray area on that. So if that budget changes uh, because you don't have the same amount of employees in your budget, is, in other words, I'm taking these funds from this SB 22 and funding part of your office over there. Well, it's not there no more. I've just changed my budget by using this grant money. It's not able, not able to do it that way. And so that's why we're waiting on the 90 days. And also what I'm saying is if you don't create if you create a job and move if you move someone out of the job that you've already got in your office and put them in that new job, then that job has to be replaced. Somebody has to replace them. Okay. Because if, if not, you've just changed the budget. You've took the you've took the grant money and used it for your office, <clears throat> and didn't use it for what they had pulled it for. Then that grant's going to go away. Then us as a board here is going to be on the hook for that. And so, are you going to go back and tell them people they don't have a job no more? So we're, that's why we're waiting until we get it here and get everything approved from the comptroller's office. I second Dana's motion. Um, basically what you said is what I was going to say. Um, I'll read it to you. The application must certify that the county will not reduce the amounts of funds provided to the offices because of grant funds provided. That supplements the plan. This must be like a supplement. It can't supplant the funds that you've already designated. There is an annual compliance piece. This is the part that scares me. Y'all know every grant has streams, and I've not even been able to find exactly what the streams are, but I will read you what I have in there. Annual compliance. If the grant is spent correctly, then you can reapply. If you do it wrong, then you cannot reapply. And if you do it wrong, then you must refund those funds within 30 days. Further, this, these will be in a separate account within our financial statements. We're looking at Fund 20 because it's available to us to use. So once the monies come in, we will set those up and we'll have a, a separate department for the Sheriff Department monies for this grant, the County Attorney, and the District Attorney. Now, That's the only way I feel comfortable. But I've not seen any more details 
than that. And that, that's what's scary to me is when it's gray area and we don't know. I'm not going to put the taxpayer out there for this, uh, each one of them, uh, his, his, uh, how much did you get in G for, uh, uh, sure. Yours is three, three fifty. So that's two cents on, almost two cents on the dollar for the for the taxpayer. I'm not going to have them liable. I understand, Mr. Patrick's got this. He's putting it all in effect. I love it. It's great. I want to take care of officers, but I'm not going to put our taxpayers on the on the dollar because we hadn't done exactly the way they want it. <clears throat> I'm not the umpire. Sometimes there's strike zones like this. Sometimes it's big. I'm gonna let the controller be the be the umpire, and then we'll go from there. And just because and that's one reason why we try to spend most of that on one time purchase also. Right. These right. grants. If they go away, then then where do we stand? And then if we get to apply for it next year, we can get the new sheriff back there, <laughs> some uh, equipment, uh, cars, vest. There's all kinds of stuff that we can use that for, and and we. We're going to continue to try to protect our officers. I'm not saying that we don't want these grants. I just want, I just want us to be uh, have all our eyes crossed and teeth. Uh, yeah, that's why I was thinking it would probably be October before we see the city work the new budget. So right. October has that. We'll see anything before October. So we'll well, we appreciate that. So back to the subject at hand. This is we've got a motion made by Commissioner Applewhite to approve the SB 22 Sheriff's Office Salary Assistant Grant of 350,000 as directed by the State Controller's Office, effective on approval by the state and agency funding received. We got a second by Commissioner Mitchell. All those in favor? Uh, All those opposed? Carry unanimously. Number eight, consider and possibly approve <coughs> plan used for Senate Bill 22 Prosecutor's Office, which is the County Attorney's Salary Assistant Grant of 175000 as directed by the State Controller's Office, effective on approval by the state agency and funding received. I Political uh, 
for them to take these funds away from us. And we've relocated the pile of Dallas and put it in. You know, and for example, you know, Davey's got uh, you know, a good salary for, assistant, for his assistant. That's going to be a very competitive salary. He can hire, he, he will have a broad pool, a big pool. And you know, the new DA coming in will have a big pool of applicants that he can look at uh, to hire a top quality person. And so uh, that grant allows that. Because you, you, know, you can't get a prosecutor to come work here. That's really the idea behind it. Um, I think we're all in agreements there, uh, Mr. Coburn. The, the whole the whole deal that, that I'm I've grants is like Barbara said, uh, working with the government's a whole different world than working from the business world. You get money in the business world is money. Uh, in the in the government world, they can take it away. We, we want to be able to take care of our people as well, but on the other side of that, we're here to look after the taxpayer's dollar, and if we go to spend a bunch of money and the grant money's not there, then we've got the taxpayers on the, on the hook for what we've, what we've spent, and that's, that's not fair to them either. So that's why we're, we've the concerns we have. We've got to cross all our T's and make sure that we do not uh, run any problems with the grant, and uh, I'll, I will do the thing. You know, I take this very seriously as far as making sure this is not right. That would be, you know, that would be a devastating result. Is, Right. And like, and like Mr. Colley said, any of that funds that we don't use, uh, it, it's okay to have to send some back uh, because y'all can't necessarily spend it uh, on equipment and things of that nature like the Sheriff's Department can. But we appreciate it and we'll work every way we can with you. I wish they would let us have more flexibility with it, but we can only use it on these. You're going to create two new jobs, right? What about the old jobs? You're going to replace them? Yeah, they have to stay. I can't do right. the job. So, okay. yes. You're going to hire two I, more? I've got, I've got a good idea what, what those jobs will have. And, I, and I've staffed it with, every, with my staff. We have a good idea of what, what we're looking at. Uh, uh, I think it, uh, you know, running about the sheriff, he, he, he's in agreement. Um, you know, I agree with the talk today that I have. Sounds like sleep. Okay. Miss Barbara, on that, with, I know that here's the problem. There's not much. There's not much teeth in the grant. We don't know exactly what you got to do and what you don't have to do. I'm assuming that we'd still have to post those jobs and things uh, for outside, or how does that work? Um, Miss Stafford, I looked at that. I, I think for every new position, it needs to be posted, and for transparency, we can put them all in the newspaper at the same time. That's my recommendation. Okay. Because you make sure that the right. like I said, there's just a lot of gray area, and, and I know they keep saying this is guaranteed money, but there's a lot of gray area there. And when you're talking about a grant, I just don't want to. I don't want to be caught uh, not doing the right thing. So. We could consider a motion on that. Make a motion. I got a motion made by Commissioner Applewhite to approve the <coughs> the Senate Bill 22 for the prosecutor's office, which is the county attorney. Second. And by 175,000, upon approval by state agency and funding received. So I got a motion by Commissioner Applewhite and a second by Commissioner Parchman. All those in favor? Uh, All those opposed. Number nine, consider and possibly approve the U.S. Senate Bill 22 Prosecutor's Office, which is our district attorney, Mr. Colley. He's already kind of spoke on some of his, and uh, I'm assuming that I, on, on this one here, it's got all of yours broke down also with... Yes, I do. Do, do y'all have a copy of this? His is as, as well, and, and I want to uh, thank you, Mr. Colley, for thank doing you, it the way you did it uh, you, and taking those benefits out as well because... If not, that's on the taxpayer. I got one. Thank you. Thank you. Is that sleet or is that rain? That's rain. I don't mind rain. Um, my office gets a uh, 175,000 separate from Mr. Cover's office. Uh, it's just a separate prosecuting body and it covers you know, two counties. So uh, we get our, our own. Um, the, uh, uh, so there was a with y'all covering, but before I forget, and I'm not trying to interrupt you, uh, with y'all covering the two counties, the Pittsburgh, uh, Camp County, and Titus County, will they also get, get funding too? It just all comes. No, just, just the office gets funding. And uh, in the same way, so like Hopkins County is similarly situated at the top of Ramsey, in the same way that, that Titus County handles all the payroll and, and kind of. 
So it's just one of one seventy five for one of them. Same thing with like the other counties that have multiple other prosecutor's offices that have multiple counties. The bigger county that takes care of all the federal stuff, that's um that they're they're basically running everything in Providence County there, you know, doing everything in the county. So like that they're not separate uh, not separate funding uh being asked there was. Um got any questions? This on, on this raising it to 130 is to raise the prosecutor prosecutor salary. That's the the system. Yes, that, that's the system. DA. Um, that's uh, and, and again talking to similar situated counties. Uh, that's that's what it's going to be um, for uh, you know for and troopers. Um, you know even before this, looking at uh, like you know, Harrison County, you know, their advertising positions for that for that similar position. You know at 115. Right. Ready even before grant. So, um, it, uh, um, in order to have somebody who's going to be willing to come here um, to do the job, it, it, that's what it needs to be. Uh, and, uh, that's not uh, that's not anything. Um, it creates a uh, an investigator position. Um, you know, we had. Uh, didn't we have that in the budget? And then Judge Mason uh, and them didn't know if we needed that. Wasn't there some discrepancy over that? There, there was. And so, so, so we had. It wasn't funded, it was like, yeah, if we can get an investigator, we ever have funding for it. Well, so now the position will be created. But it, but it was in the budget, it just never was funded because we didn't hire one, is that correct? It never was funded because of the argument with, because of the disagreement with Kent County on how to, on necessity and how to fund it. And so what, what we decided or what I was instructed was that um, basically you're not going to have that position unless we get grant money to cover it. So, Barbara, you remember that was in our budget? Yeah, so, for some reason, I thought it was in, in our budget. And I don't know about Judge Mason's over there, but I was thinking it was in ours. Yeah. That, that's something that we definitely need to look at uh, with the Comptroller's Office because it is in that budget. It's back to that gray area is what I'm talking about. Because if that changes our budget, my understanding is it changes everything up on, on the grant. Is that not right, Barbara? I haven't read that. I don't know. That's the thing. I don't, I don't know which way it is, but, but that is a supplement supply problem. Right. Because we have it in the budget. The fact that we have it in there, but, but you were told that we weren't going to fill it is something that didn't get to my office. So that being the case, perhaps we now, with this grant, we have money to hire this new position, and then we also would need to fill the other, the other investigator position. Like I said, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not here to be throwing, throwing hard balls at you. I'm just trying to make sure that we've got everything protected and, and with this budgeted area. So that being said, once again, I don't have a problem with it when it goes to the controller's office, making sure that that's not a budgeted problem there. So just so that we're on the same page. All right. Uh, so with any other questions? Again, uh, I'm, I'm, a little, uh, I'm a little more comfortable. Uh, of course, I'm not the county judge, but I'm a little more comfortable. I, I would ask that it be funded immediately, as opposed to waiting on funds. Judge Cooper and I have a discussion about we, that. We, we can agree to disagree, and I'm not going to be mad when you go down the steps, but I don't feel comfortable funding it until the funds are here and it has been approved, just like we did on the others. Judge Cooper. My understanding is that the application process is you go in, you, or John Harper, or David, David would need to do one. David is the only one who does his, and I think, under my understanding, is I have to do the sheriff's and... I can do mine. You have to, you have to do the sheriff's. I can do mine.
but deciding whether or not they're going to approve something, I don't know when we're going to know the answer to that. We'll know it when they send that money. No, we won't. Because until you do annual compliance, no. are they going to review those? Are they going to review the plans? Or uh, what I read, if you didn't have to see your plan, you just had to check the box. That's yes. Yes. And then you tally up it. Yeah. So, so we can get the money, and they can still say at the end, that's, that's not an approved item. Well, after the money is here, we, we will do it that way, and then, like I said, we'll have to take a chance then. Right. And because of, because of the vagueness, they may change your mind. I think we need to run this. What I, what I'm planning to do is when I get this thing ready, I'm going to look at it. I said, y'all see any problem with this? Because I don't want that to happen. That, that's a huge position for us. For the county, and, right. and that's what I'm trying to say. What bothers me about this is it's like nonchalant about, oh, you know, this is not your typical grant. Want to get it forever as long as the commissioners don't mess with your budget it's your money and you know that's what they tell us but then we all know how this stuff really works and so that's why we're all nervous just like the email, they're going to send you $4 million. All they need is your bank account. Yeah. So, so <laughs> I, I hadn't got my $4 million yet either. So. I'm going to run. I'm going to, I, I just think we just need to be very detailed. We need to follow up. I'm going to we need to call the comptroller's office, tell them what we're doing, and just you know, right. that way we can do everything we need to do. So, so as soon as y'all do fire, and if it does, I, I'm not, me personally, I only got one vote here among the five of us, but me personally, <laughs> I, I'm gonna wait the 90 days until the until the money arrives, because that's all I've heard from. I, I talked to six county judges this weekend, and all of them are telling me at least 90 days. So, and if it does, there's there's no problem with that. Every other every other day, you know, and so we're taking because we're always getting funds, and so as soon as those funds hit, have no problem with dispersing them once we've received them. If that makes sense to you. Y'all go with that? Yeah. Got a motion on that? Can make a motion. Got a motion made by Commissioner Applewhite to approve this upon the funding re being received. Second. Second by Commissioner Mitchell. All those in favor? Uh, uh, All those opposed? Uh, Carries unanimously. Consider and possibly approve the funds for the Railroad Commission for Organization Report Form P5 Filing Guarantee Bank and Trust for the letter of credit, processing fees, and legal service fees. Ms. Dana, would you like to speak on that? This is what we do every year at this. Need, they need approval before and then they will send us invoice. But they need approval that y'all are going to do this. It's for the um, fees, for the guarantee, fees for the lawyers, and then the fees for the railroad. The railroad. The Railroad Commission is 750, the guarantee fee is 250, and then there's 750 for the legal services. And I, I would very much appreciate getting this done because guarantee either calls me twice a day or Danny twice a day wanting, wanting this letter over there signed. So we still have a little time on it, but they, they want it done quickly for some reason. So I make a motion we approve it. <clears throat> Got a motion made by Commissioner Parker to approve the possible fundings of the Railroad Commission organization report. Second. Second by Commissioner Applewhite. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Number 11, consider and possibly appoint Chris Burling, MD, as the local health authority. Once again, we've run into a little situation where we were out of date on this, and it had been expired since 4-6 of 22. We did not have a, a, a local health authority. It's very important for us to have that, and so I'm asking that we approve. I talked to Dr. Burling. Dr. Burling is, is in full agreements with being our local health authority. He does this on a volunteer basis. There's no pay for him, but we certainly appreciate his help on this and definitely need to be in compliance with this so that we've got everything with the health department going. I'll make a motion to approve him. Got a motion made by Commissioner Mitchell. Second. Second by Commissioner Parker to make Chris, Chris Burling, Parchman, Chris Burling as the MD of the local health authority. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Carries unanimously. Number 12, consider and possibly approve the quarterly investment reports. I sent that to you guys. Um, I can wait it up for all of us. You good with all those, Barbara? Yes, sir. I saw them. So. Make the motion we approve them. Got a 
A motion made by Commissioner Parker to approve the quarterly investment report. Second. Second by Commissioner Parchman. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Number 13, approve the oral and written report from the county officials. Make that motion. Got a motion made by Commissioner Applewhite to approve the oral and written reports of the county officials. Second. Second by Commissioner Parker. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Number 14 on the agenda, considering possibly accept the treasurer's report as a matter of fact. Record? Make the motion be accepted. Got a motion made by Commissioner Parchman. Second. Got a second by Commissioner Mitchell. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Number 15, approve the budgeted amendments. Ms. Barber? I have one budget amendment from the 2024-06. It's the first quarter budget review. Um, pardon me, I said I was too. I'm sure you all read it. I was reading the record here. Uh, the first one is to increase the rental revenue from the solar grid pricing for the renting and all expensive office groups. That's $8,946. The second item is a $50 line change in the district code. It's an increase of $50 to travel and seminars and a decrease to other expenses. That's due to just increased cost to travel. Uh, in the county attorney's office, um, if you can recall, when we did the budget, we did the budget in May, we approved it in August, but there were changes made within the county attorney's office from when it was discussed in May until, until October 1st. So there's about $2,454 that needs to come out of the part-time secretary line up to the county secretary line. There's no change in his total budget. It's just a line item transfer for items that were made due, due to changes in staff between May and October, before the new fiscal year started. Um, we get something called the Savings Grant. Here's an example of grant, grant grants. We get a Savings Grant. We get it every year. We've gotten it for a long, long time. It's a statewide victim assistance notification. You have to notify victims. It's a requirement, but there's a grant that pays for that. However, we don't get notified in time to put it in your, in your books of reference because you don't do that until you either get a notice of grant award or a statement of grant award or something like that. Therefore, we budget it every year within our human services portion of our budget, $8,000. Now we've been notified, so now we're going to take that expenditure out and put those funds back into general contingency. And then another item within this, within this budget amendment is to set up the grant itself. The actual funds that we're getting for that is six thousand seven hundred and eighty dollars those funds come into us and then we pay those out to um, a vendor that is determined by the state it's about it's we pay a quarter of that four times a year when they bill us it's what we've always done this is just the internal control that i put in place where we don't set up a grant till we get that letter that says yes you're getting the funds um, the other item we have mr mitchell brought this to my attention he had ordered a dump truck that was not received by September 30th, so we're going to have to add that to your capital outlay line. You and I have already talked about it, and I sent you a reminder email. And that those are uh, funds from his, um, his the ARPA money. Now, these are the funds that you used when you sold assets. Yes. Um, the next item is vital statistics. Uh, Ms. Brosnan asked for a decrease to travel and seminars and an increase to office expense to purchase the uh, papers that are needed to print birth and death certificates. And the last item, the sheriff's forfeiture fund. The sheriff has funds in forfeiture of about $15,000 and he has requested the use of those to purchase um, carriers and uniform shirts. He can use those funds as he deems necessary, but it does need to come to court for your approval. Question. Make a motion to approve the budget amendments. Got a motion made by Commissioner Applewhite to approve the budget amendments. Second. Second by Commissioner Mitchell. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? I'd like to go back on item number 10 where we consider possibly approving the fund for the Railroad Commission the organizational fees and the reports for guarantee. Since Ms. Dana and I signed this, Mr. Applewhite seconded it, so I'd rather go back and, and let, I think, Mr. Mitchell, who, who made the motion on that number 10? I did. Oh, I Jim, made the motion. Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy made the motion. I don't mind Jimmy making the motion, but since she's signing it, I'm signing it. I'd rather somebody else second it than instead of Dana. If, and I'm not trying to cause a stir. I just, is everybody? 
That's what. That's why I brought it. I'd rather just back it up that way. If that's, yeah. That's right. So we got a motion made by Commissioner Parker. Second. Okay. And a second by Commissioner Mitchell. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. No. I know what's So. Okay. Appreciate that. No problem. Okay. Number 16, sign and pay the orders and approve the payments. Make a motion we pay our bill. Got a motion made by Commissioner Parker to pay the pay those approved payments. Second. Second by Commissioner Parchman. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, All uh, those opposed? Closing statements, Jeff? None down here. Jody? I just appreciate uh, us working together as a, as a whole group to try to get this fire department going because we've already you know, started it, and we need to comply with it. So, thank y'all. Like, you know, we need a lot of prayers for the community. We've lost uh, quite a few people the last couple of days, and just keep a, a prayer, give a prayer to those families that have lost loved ones and stuff. So we have, we've had a lot of them the last five days. Just prayers for the family. Didn't weigh anything. We've got Mr. Ward here, our emergency coordinator. I just want to uh, tell you how much we appreciate all you did during the ice and the, and the cold spell that we had, the opening up of, of out there in the in the communities. If the if the county folks needed those, we're still available. I want everybody to realize that it doesn't matter if you live in the country or if you live in the city, you're still available. Go to the Civic Center for their opening, uh, for their warming centers, cooling centers, and all those things, water, anything that you need. There's been a little misrepresentation on that. That is not the case. Anybody in Titus County is welcome in town or as, as well as, as those that we opened up out in the county. We appreciate all you did. We've got uh, so many comments uh, on, your, on the page. Uh, you and, and Monica assisting you with that, and, and I'm sure Miss Penny's doing a little help on that as well. We want to appreciate it. If we get the people in the county notified of what's going on, it's a big, great help for everybody. We've got a whole lot of followers on that page now, and that's an attribute to, to the two of y'all and staying up on that. Appreciate all the hard work you're doing and uh, also the hard work that you're doing on getting the mitigation plan in progress. Uh, it's With government, it takes a while, and we're getting that. So in case we do have a big disaster, then we're going to have those funds available to us. And just want to thank you for, for that, Mr. Ward. With that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Got a motion made by Commissioner Mitchell to adjourn. Second. Got a second by Commissioner Parker. We'll adjourn at 1022.